In this episode of Project Electrolyte, I'm going to go through what it took to install the motor, some of the problems I faced and how I decided to solve them. The motor arrived last week, came uh, from Stealth EV, and they had this thing so clean it looked brand new. The motor was even polished, the inverter side was polished, the brakes looked machined. I don't think it could get any better. So I was able to lift it up off the pallet with a uh, engine hoist and I put it up on my roll around table. This way I can roll it under the car and then just lower the car down onto it so I can see how the fitment is. Right off the bat, I was pretty excited. This looks pretty cool. A little high for the ride height. So carefully looked around without damaging anything. In the back you can see the old tank, uh, fuel tank support ridges there. I had to cut those corners off to make a little more room. And then it was still kind of hanging down low below the frame. I want it flush with the rest of the frame of the car. So this gap needs to be taken care of. The, the problem was the sway bar and the control arm here were hitting the frame. Took a little bit of trial and error, drawing some lines, going side to side, front and back, making sure I, I make this cut correctly. So you can see it took me a bunch of tries here. Uh, I kind of colored in the one that I thought was the final answer and then got out the uh, cutoff wheel on a grinder and just started cutting. Between the cutoff wheel and a sawzall, I was able to get a fairly good cut. You know, there's some rough edges that need to be fixed before uh, I fill it in, but I just took the one side, copied it on, on the other side, made them both about the same. And now we're test fitting the motor again, and you can see there's clearance for that control arm and sway bar. So that was able to tuck it up. Now the uh, mounting point here is just right flush with the frame as it starts to curve up and the bottom is flush with the bottom of the car. In this back mount you can see it's right up next to the frame as well. So nice and tight. Everything looked a lot better and that was really all I had to cut. There was no other modifications. And I kind of looked around, made sure that the rest of it fit, and the motor and inverter are inside the frame rails. You can see the, the curve of the cast aluminum from the Tesla unit fits right in. Lots of room above it where the axle used to be. And uh, I'm really happy with the way everything came out. The next problem was how do I attach the car to this? Uh, this is going to hang from the car, or, or rather the car is going to be setting on top of it. Uh, the best idea I could come up with is I wanted it to set on the frame and so I made these plates that were big enough to uh, help me start to size everything and these are thin material so I can shape them much easier. I just bolted them into place that way I could trim them to make them fit where they might need clearance. Uh, the rears were fine just in a big rectangle but the front I had to notch out for that lower control arm uh, mounting point. So it was easy to just shape it with a, a little bandsaw. Now I could take the, the car and lower it right down onto these plates. So these plates are below the frame and it kind of gave me a good idea if this is a final resting place, which it, it seemed to be. This again is the rear. It also kind of protects the wire loom that was routed in this area. The front is as the frame starts to curve up. So it just barely hit the edge of the frame with the edge of this plate, but uh, Looking at it, I figured I could reinforce it. So I took the final dimensions, put them in Fusion 360, and this was the drawing. Very simple, just sketch. And then I made a tool path in Fusion as well. Really loving the software along with the little plasma table. Uh, it's quick and easy to make precise parts that you can duplicate, especially when it's thicker metal. This is out of 3 16ths now instead of the thin metal. So. A little harder to do with uh, simple tools and you can see here the first cut it just fit right around uh, the area I had to trim before. While I was at it I decided to cut some spacers. I measured the car and found some square points and decided that 11 and a quarter inches from the original leaf spring mount was perfect and so here it is in place. It's resting against the leaf spring mount and I have just ratchet straps with some light tension to keep it right tight there. Then I was able to kind of shift it back and forth, forward and back, and just get it exactly even on all sides so it's very square. 
And with it resting there, then I was able to do a tack weld. This front mount, since it just had the little corner, I did uh, more than a tack weld. It was a, a big beefy weld, which you definitely want it in place so it doesn't move. Then I carefully removed all of the mounting bolts that I had in these plates and then uh, did a full weld around it. And then after that flat plate was in place, uh, I started to work on the gussets. These are just simple gussets, uh, four of the same in the rear of the car, and they'll just support the, the cantilevered area of that uh, first plate. I decided to weld them at an angle. It just seemed like it had a little more bite on the frame, and, and it looks pretty cool too. Plenty of room to uh, get the nut or bolt in place for the drive unit. The front gussets were a little different. I had a couple big ones and a couple small ones. The um, the machine cut them out really well, but you still have to kind of prep them for welding on the on the sanding disc. This one you can see it actually overlaps through the frame. This will be a gusset as well as capping off the frame, which needs to be closed back in. And then I just got it to fit as square as possible. Nice T joint at the bottom fills in that little curved gap area and provides a lot of strength for this forward mount. And here it is with the uh, drive unit back in it. Plenty of room to get to that nut, uh, plenty of strength around it, and it, it capped off that frame area really well. Here's the uh, drive unit mounted, and you can see that rear gusseted mount. Uh, looks pretty clean uh, with the way that scrap metal I used was. It's rusty. It looks like it came off the car that way. And now everything fit in really well. That uh, brake rotor, the hub is exactly centered uh, front to back, side to side. The whole unit just looks really good in the car. I think the ride height is gonna be really good and um, I'm very happy with the fitment. I did drop it out one more time, added a couple more gussets on the inside of the front mount. So it's, it's almost like a uh, sandwich around the, the existing frame. And I kept that angle in there to get a little more bite Everything uh, fit right back in, the bolts just set in. So the whole rear end is done now. Next we'll be working on the front end. I'm waiting on my Gerst uh, front suspension to show up. I need that in place along with my steering. I'm gonna use a, a new column from Flaming River and also use their electric power steering which will be mounted under the dash. And once all that's in, in place, I'll be able to get back to my uh, battery box design and, and start fabricating these boxes to make sure they fit with the suspension, the steering in the front end, and everything else. This is a really long project. If you uh, like following it along, please subscribe. You can ring the bell. You'll get notifications when I make new videos, and uh, this is going to carry on for quite some time. Thanks for watching.